Hello. I'm going to talk about XDP metadata, mostly from um, transmit side, but I'm going to start with a kind of generic XDP intro. I don't know if anyone is familiar. So XDP is this kind of old school uh, style hook, was probably one of the first ones uh, for BPF, which we have basically in the driver low in the stack. We have this BPF hook, which can receive the packet, do something with it, maybe send it out. Uh, at some point, uh, we've added AFXDP, which is this uh, new protocol family, which using this XDP hook, it can route some packets into the user space rings, and they can also produce something to send it out later. Um, it, it's all nice, but I think uh, up until recently, the XDP hook was missing a bunch of metadata. Uh, and now that when we have it, uh, I, the question is, should we have something similar for TX? I have those kind of two blue uh, things here. One might be a transmit side hook, one might be a transmit complete side hook. So I'm gonna try to argue why we need that. I don't know in which form. Um, but starting with uh, receive side metadata. So um, what it is, it's basically um, when you receive a packet along with the data, you can get some metadata from the NIC uh, because with the 100G to 100G, it's basically, uh, too expensive for the CPU to do everything. So we have some offloads, um, and Nick is saying like, okay, here's the flow hash for this packet, here's maybe the checksum, or maybe checksum is checked and you don't even need to do anything. Here's the hardware timestamp for the packet. And uh, we've recently added this um, for XDP, so it's kind of, um, from the XDP context, you can read this metadata, you can do something with it. Um, and the question now is like, uh, what, what should we do for TX? Because uh, for TX, we also would like, maybe from the AFXDP context, uh, to signal something to the NIC uh, and saying, okay, you need to do some uploading thing. Uh, for example, um, you can upload checksums, all the like um, GSO, you can split the packet, you can also receive transmit timestamps. There's a lot of things we can do. Um, I put Toki's uh, queuing idea later on. I, I guess I'm mentioning here because it's out of scope for me, but there's a bunch of things we can uh, do on transmit as well. And we either need a hook or something else to kind of grab all the data. Uh, and this is again to argue that uh, why we need it, mostly because the rest of the stack is already using it. SG SKB basically using all this metadata one way or another. Uh, but to reach uh, feature parity on the XDP side, and to fully support AFXDP um, efficient cases, we might need to expose it to the uh, XDP context. Uh, so currently, basically, we have this um, receive side implemented. Um, I, I would say there is this framework, which means uh, when you load the program, you can say that this program is bound to specific net dev, and specific net dev implements a bunch of callbacks. Uh, that implement this metadata. The callbacks, usually they look at the NIC, receive descriptors, parse something out, return it, um, and then that's it. We have a couple of examples of receive metadata for receive hash, receive timestamp. Um, over time, this can grow, but I think we kind of have the foundation, um, which is those two things, right? The, the net dev bound programs and, uh, and uh, key funks. Uh, on receive side, uh, yes, as I mentioned, maybe more uh, receive side metadata, uh, but I guess that's as the kind of, it will grow organically. When people need it, we will add it. And for transmit side, I think we're missing a lot of things, like we don't even have the hooks, uh, we don't have metadata. Um, so um, what I need specifically is kind of super small subset. Um, for my use case. I need receive hardware timestamps and I need transmit hardware timestamps. Uh, but I think solving this particular problem is like a too small and probably won't fly. So I'm, I'm trying to see if I can kind of present it as a kind of larger effort where we have this generic receive metadata, the generic transmitter metadata, and I'm solving this for myself with, with the timestamps. Um, yeah. I, I, I guess fundamentally what we need, um, and it, it doesn't have to be hooks, it might be F entry, whatever, um, but we need two points. Uh, we need one point where we run BPF at transmit before the packet is, is, is out, and we need a second point um, uh, after the packet has been transmitted. There is 
interrupt from the NIC or whatever, some completion signal. And we want to also be able to access descriptors to read out the timestamps. Um, I'm, I'm specifying here XDP. I don't know, it might be confusing, but I guess initially I was thinking about doing kind of full-blown XDP at transmit. I know there's been an effort like that. Um, but yeah, I guess it's, we still need to decide like how much of an XDP we really want to do on TX. One other thing that I don't know if, uh, I probably don't need it, but the question is like, if, if there is an AFXDP uh, producer consumer, do we need to have access to the AFXDP kind of packet wing in case at transmit side or at transmit completion side, you want to put, put something into the ring to signal to the user? Uh, I guess for my use case, I'm not considering it, but I guess I'm just raising here for, uh, for completeness sake. And um, uh, for, I guess, the way to um, receive the transmit metadata, for me, the natural thing to do would be to apply the same idea as, as receive of a bunch of key funks that the drivers implement and it's all nicely abstracted. So I've considered a bunch of things. I guess first one was um, doing something FXDP specific because that's what we kind of use but it seems too narrow because uh, like, why should it be FXDP? What if I just run XDP program and I want to get the same completion signals and so on? Um, another thing I was toying with doing like XDP-like hooks uh, at transmit, just, uh, but I guess it's too complicated, maybe, uh, or maybe I'm not too smart. Uh, a lot of baggage has been added to XDP, as I told this like old school, uh, a touch point based, too many uh, helpers. Helpers have a bunch of assumptions about everything. Um, so I guess in the end, what I ended up doing is kind of uh, hit BPF-like, lightweight thing uh, with a bunch of kind of um, places. Uh, I guess with the approach I'm still toying with, um, we would have uh, kind of device-bound tracing programs, like we have device-bound XDP programs you would be able to attach those tracing programs only to specific places in, in the drivers. We would do the same checks at, at the touch time uh, to guarantee that you're not attaching this program anywhere. But we would get kind of the same nice things as uh, you can use KFUNCs. Those KFUNCs are resolved to particular net dev and they are efficient and uh, we don't waste cycles doing the indirect calls. Um, so yeah, I guess m my proposal, I'll probably send it out mm, soonish uh, upstream is, again, looks like a hit BPF. You have BPF syscall programs. We have a bunch of key funks to tell, okay, attach this program FD um, to TX hook, attach this program FD to TX completion hooks. Uh, you can say when you're loading tracing program, uh, you can say this is a tracing program that's device bound, and you get uh, metadata key funks. And uh, yeah, and you can, Use the KFUNCs. Uh, I, I have a quick question here. So y you're hooking to almost the same spot that XDP hooks on the ingress, sort of the symmetric opposite. Yeah. Uh, uh. But you're not calling it XDP, you're calling it tracing hooks. So, I mean, to me, it just sounds like you've named it something different. Why don't we just call it XDP TX? XDP TX is confusing. There's already XDP TX in the sense that you can send out the packet, right? So I, I'm calling it XDP egress. Because sure, TX XDP is egress is fine. Yeah. Um, if you go back w one slide, like the, the, thing that, the, the thing that caught my ear was that you said there might be multiple hooks, right? Like what's wrong with just a hook, like an egress, XDP egress hook? So we need one for completion, right, as well to... Because you want the callback on the completion? Yeah. Do you need both? Yeah. I mean, I need the completion one, but I think... You don't need the other one. I actually probably need the other one because for TX timestamp, what you usually do is you kind of per packet say, okay, I need it, right? Because you request it and then you get it. That's and you want to insert a timestamp into the TX descriptor before it's submitted to the driver? I, I want to ask the NIC to put uh, the TX completion, yeah. So. Oh, so you're not, okay, you're not inserting the timestamp for the NIC to submit in the future. You're, you're actually I'm just wanting to yeah. set the bit on the descriptor so that when the callback comes back, the NIC has put the timestamp yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the descriptor. And then you want to be able to read the descriptor. Yeah. Okay. I personally, I think having access to the descriptor is super useful. 
Like I, we have a lot of cases where we have hardware where if we could look at the descriptors on the TX callback and on the ingress, to be honest, um, and pull, I mean, there's useful stuff in those descriptors, like any error cases, any you know number of bytes submitted. I mean, there's just lots of in useful information um, that we would collect and then report back as statistics. It's going to be per device. That doesn't bother me. I mean, I, I don't mind writing per device programs. I have, I generally know what the devices are. I know some people were upset about that at one point, but like, if you have a Melnix card, you got to have a Melnix program, right? Or yeah, Intel no, I, Nick, I, you got to have an Intel program. I guess what I would like here, from my point of view, to preserve the same things we have at RX, where yeah. you have k funks that give you kind of nice abstractions, but if you know what you're doing, you can get access to the raw descriptors and go wild. Yeah, yeah. The only trouble that we had with k funks is it requires sort of non-hardware specific things, yeah. right? Like it's sometimes it's hard to abstract. It's easier just to say, give me the descriptor. I mean, from my side, it <laughs> generally it's just easier to say, just give me the descriptor and I'll read the I'll read the manual and figure out what to read. But I, I get I get I think the k funk is also useful for portability, I suppose, if that's yep. if that's viable. So um, there are two cases of the Smith. Uh, so one is the one, the XDPTX, the actual like XDPX Smith, which is different from the one that I think you want to hook into. So you're hooking this X Smith right before and after completion when it goes from the normal uh, networking stack where you have an SKB. That's right. That's my I want to hook it lower, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's lower. Yeah, you want to be at the driver. You want to look at descriptor, but when the stack, when the user space does the whatever TCP, SKB goes through everything. You have a nice big packet. Then uh, Nick didn't do like was asked to do TSO probably, but like you just want to look at descriptor. So this is not really XDP. So I agree with you that this is more like tracing hooks, because. You don't want like there is no XDB MD here. There is no like abstraction what we have on the Rex side as XDP XDP MD. Here you have an SKB, right? So this is like more net new net filter hook, where we have like tr new net filter is still stable program type, but and well stableish I guess the hooks way in the networking stack. But access to all of it is tracing style. Netfilter yeah. has access to Netfilter state and SKB. Here you probably want access to SKB as well, just in case you will decide based on packet contents, like bits in SKB or bits inside the packet, whether you want this timestamp or not. So it's more tracing like. So it XDP here and even XDP names, I think, don't fit. XDP aggress also quite doesn't. Uh, so I would like. Try to proceed like this hit BP, hit BPF style at tracing hooks, looking at TX descriptor like makes sense, generate before the transmit and after completion. All of it makes sense, but I would also like, think what's your answer to XDP style transmit? Whether you want anything to be there or not, but if you don't, that's also fine, but you need to articulate like that this is separate XMIT. And typically in the driver, it's also done differently. There will be like completely different queues for the XDPRX, the one that XDPTX directly. And I think XDP reject also uses them and separate transmit queues for the stack. So like as long as like it's all uh, described and documented, looks fine to me. Yeah, I think one case, maybe you're talking about SKP, but also AFXDP, like, like do we want this all? At some point we need for AFXDP to say, I want this packet to be uh, chunked and split out, or I want to have a tunneling upload, right? We need some vehicle for this to kind of trigger some kernel code. This might be also it, right? Depending on. Yeah, it may be a third thing, right? Mainly because there are different queues. Um, like XDP X one set of transmit queues, stack is another. I forgot how XDP, if XDP is doing, whether it's using one or the other queues. I think it's using the standard stack queues. Or maybe it's a third set of queues. Like it also like depends how drivers do it. In theory, yeah, FXDP makes sense also to cover, but I wouldn't try to to all of them fit into one narrow uh, bottleneck just because they're so different today. Okay. Yeah. Um. Tok has a question. Tok, go for it. Yeah, I would um, I would actually keep the FKB path out of this, 
and make it a uh, an XDP redirect slash AFXDP um, hook only and hook it so that you have an XDP frame. Right now, when you do an AFXDP TX, it builds an SKP, but it really doesn't need to. It could just do an XDP frame um, so that you operate on the XDP side only. I, if I remember correctly, this was also like including the FKB path was what stranded the HTTP uh, TX um, effort the last time because it was simply too uh, complex with TSO and all the different paths that, they, that an FKB can take. But if we have an XTP frame, that becomes a lot simpler. And I think this is also useful for XTP redirect for the, uh, for the tune bit and so on. It, it took us um, I'm, oh, sorry, I, I'm just going to say that the my experience is that the XKB path with the TX descriptor is likely more useful for my use cases. Sort of the opposite of what you're saying. <laughs> right. I mean, okay, well, that implies we need both, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's just different use cases. So I'm not like, I'm not yeah. saying your use case doesn't. I mean, so so one, one problem with it. doing it as a, um, as a um, tracing type hook is that you don't attach to a net device, you attach to a driver and then you have to disambiguate between different net devs yourself handled yeah, by that driver, right? That doesn't bother me in my use case because I, what I really want is some info from that TX descriptor. Uh, and specifically, actually, almost more useful is that callback descriptor, which has more information about what it did. Um, but this, this is more of like a, an observability and security and debugging kind of thing than a than a XDP, traditional XDP, like fast path redirect, right? Or not, I'm not actually going to redirect anything. I'm not trying to insert myself in the routing stack in any way, right? I'm just trying to collect uh, statistics about the system so I can sort of understand uh, things about the NIC. Like buffers are full, mm -hmm. there was a, you know, we did TSO or we didn't do TSO, the, you know, the various, kind of all that mm -hmm. stuff that's in that TX callback descriptor and, and kind of, create useful metrics from that. I, I would agree that the completion hook is the most useful one in the short term, and I wouldn't mind doing that one first either. OK, yeah. I mean, we can start with, I guess I'll send both, and we can argue which one makes sense. We're using all our proprietary stuff. Uh, I think this one will be most likely be used with the, with the GVNIC in the cloud. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to get the Onox five. Another related thing I, I wanted to mention now that we were talking about queues is the fact that we don't have access to any kind of uh, TX queue object from AFXDP of either AFXDP or XDP redirect. Um, and I've been thinking about ways of, of doing that. Do you have have you looked at that at all when you were looking at this? No. Okay. Um. If you if you want, um, this would be useful on I think most near term for us on the Mellanox NIC, and I have some. So, um, if if you want to send the RFC or something, I, c I could probably look to implement something on Mellanox as well. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Anything else? I have a bunch of slides, but they're I guess mostly just yeah the thing that we've discussed. Uh, Oh yeah, I did not get why you needed the syscall program type. Yeah, the, uh, look at, I guess, hit BPF. That's that's the way kind of they attach, right? You don't have any kind of attach your API. You, you, you do the syscall program that calls a bunch of key funks that attach. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you.